we had this clip courtesy of Mark Norman's podcast with um, Joe List called Tuesdays with Stories. I used to watch or listen to Tuesdays with Stories quite often, but then I kind of got bored and I think I stopped listening to it because I felt like they were just whining about shit. Mark Norman essentially playing up the fact that he's like a ditzy guy. I forget this, I forget that. I have to pay for that to get there. Oh my God, this show there. I booked too many shows. Whoopsie, I don't have a planner. Whoopsie, don't have an assistant. And Joe Lister, I don't know, nihilism, I don't know, hypochondriac thing kind of got annoying. I don't know, after a while, just lost this magic. And it's annoying because I felt like Choosers with Stories kind of replaced... Um, What's the other show I used to watch? I forgot the fucking name of it. But anyway, um, it was it kind of filled that void for me for a stand-up comedy podcast that was just funny. Nothing to do with politics, nothing to do with culture war stuff. Just two guys sitting down trying to make each other laugh. Like Matt and Shane's secret podcast, which I've been fucking binging and listening to all the time now. But for some reason, it's kind of lost this sort of va va voom but I guess it must just be one of those things. These podcasts basically run their course after a while, especially if the guys end up becoming successful. Because for a period in time, Mark Norman was really get was really successful, was way more successful than Joe List. And now I feel like they kind of reached some level of parity because Joe List has kind of been able to direct movies and you know his stand-up career is pretty decent. He's got a good special out. So they're kind of on the same sort of level. But I felt like sometimes when they're on like opposite opposing levels, like it's kind of nice that friction of them taking the piss out of each other and stuff and whatever and hanging out. I don't know. I, I kinda like that. Um what people we saying in the chat. Um yeah oh yeah big up Wolfgang Richter. I uh, uh, appreciate you brother. Josie's saying that's a great point either for that um Josie Martin's saying I can't sign Joe List is it really I would imagine people would not like Mark Norman more out of Joe List. I don't see what Joe List, why he would annoy people. He seems kind of whatever. Um, if anything, like I said, the hypochondriac stuff is a bit odd. He clearly has a lot of like self, he, he clearly has a lot of like insecurities and shit. I don't know why, but he just has, you just, you can just tell somebody he's kind of fidgety and not too sure about themselves. He, like he comes across like he's got a lot of anxiety and shit just through listening to him. I don't know, I don't, it's one of the only podcasts I don't, I don't watch. I just listen to the audio and it kind of bleeds through. But the chronic forgetting of things and being a disaster before going to an airport stories, they just, I think they give me extra anxiety for actually Mark Norman's stories of how he kind of cuts it to the line with airports and stuff and checking in and booking gigs and stuff. It, it gives me anxiety because I'm those, I'm that loser that goes to an airport five hours ahead of time. Do you know what I mean? I don't take no chances. I want to go there and chill. I'll get a drink. I'll chill out. I'll watch some series on there before my flight comes. I, I don't take any chances. So when I hear people that leave their house with only an hour before they gate close or right on the line, it's just like, no, no, no mass. I don't want to do enough. To. Anyway, let's play the clip anyway. Mark Norman makes a good point about podcast merch, which I never really thought about. But he makes a really good point, I feel like, in this clip. We do the show, we have our good time, we sell some merch. Then you got that weird thing where Jason's like, here's all the merch you have left, giant pile of queef shirts. Yeah. And he goes, you want me to ship it or you want to just take it? And I was like, ah, what are you going to do? And I, I was thinking, ship it, ship it. But he's like, hey, might as well just take it. And I, I felt so bad he did so much work and helped us out so much. And I was like, all right. And I just went upstairs and threw it in the garbage. Yeah, this is what's hard with the merch. I, I said it. This is my pitch, by the way. I'm, I'm so bad at pitching. I'm like, could you guys buy shirts? Because every week I leave a club being like, okay, take care, guys. Exactly. Thanks for having me. It's and a carry on. Merch is tricky, too, because you're like Matt Wayne, my, my, my dear friend, your friend, opener. He opens and then he's like, I'll help you with the merch. And then people, I feel terrible because they just lose sight that... This is a human being and a comedian. Yes. So then they start walking. They see the previous person. They start walking up. They hand their phone, and they just don't take a photo. So now he's just the photo guy. Oh. But some clubs give you a photo guy. Always happens that way. And so then by the end of the weekend, I'm like, here's $9,000, Matt. I took a loss because yeah. I feel terrible that he's taking photos. Right, right. I know. I'm tipping everybody out. I tip the, the photo photo lady and then jason's like do you know her i'm like i don't know her he's like i don't know her either so oh geez she might have just, just been a lady while brendan shaw is charging for fucking meet and greets these guys are taking pictures for free and then paying their openers money for being the quasi selfie camera or smartphone operator for people to take pictures of their with them with their fans the contrast is funny but the point that mark norman made at the start of the clip is interesting where he will go to do a gig 
he'll bring loads of comedy shirts with him, which I think is great, right? That line, comedy, right? I fucking love that. And have that on a shirt or a hoodie and shit or a hat, whatever he's got in terms of merch. And, you know, you'd imagine shirts like that with that phrase, you know, white text on a black T-shirt for $20, $30. You'd imagine people would be fighting hand over fist to kind of get go get one, especially after the show, after watching you play, especially in a comedy club especially if it's like in a dive bar or something or just whatever comedy clubs are just basically de facto bars. You're probably going to have some cash in your pocket. I'm surprised. Maybe this is a thing most of you guys can tell me in the chat. I'm surprised more comedy fans aren't willing to like buy merch like that. Cash in hand. Is that a thing? Do you go to comedy clubs and just want to see the person perform and then go home? Or just drink? Or No, actually, that's, that's the other thing. Would you rather go to a comedy club, watch somebody perform, and whatever money you have in your pocket, actually use to buy more drinks or to buy more food, but you don't want to go and buy merch kind of thing? Because if it's me, I would rather buy comedy, comedian merch at a comedy club where they're playing, after they're playing, as opposed to buying it off their site. Because these guys are fucking redax. They're fucking lazy. There's no guarantee you're going to get that shipped anytime soon. So to guarantee that I have it in my hand, I'd rather go to a club, watch them perform, buy the ticket, and also bring an extra $20, $30, $50, and buy the t-shirt or hoodie or whatever I want to get. I'm legitimately surprised that people, more people don't buy merch from comedians after shows. Clearly what Mark Norman said is true, because he said he basically just gets loads of merch left over after the show, and he can't bother to lug it all the way back with him home because he's probably bought loads of stuff when he's out there and whatnot and just bins it all fuck it i'll take the loss i'll take the l i'm surprised more people don't do that maybe i'm maybe i'm the one that's a bit redacted and i will maybe there's people anyway that just don't buy merch overall because i'm a weirdo because i I'm a, I'm a fan of things so if i like things i'll just buy merch for it whether it's bands rappers artists podcasts and shit i'll just buy whatever just so i can signal to people hey i listen to this thing but I think some people just don't buy any merch. Like they think that's ridiculous. It's corny. It's lame. I don't know. What, what what's your views here in the chat? Um, who just says I always buy merch if the comic is selling it. A lot of them don't have merch for some reason. Yeah, true. Exactly. Gabriel says I like merch for mementos. Yeah, true. Okay, some of you don't even wear the merch. I guess some people like wearing it for bed. Some people just having it in the in the cupboard just to say, yeah, I went to that show. It's like the it's a way of like it's a it's a kind of another version of like buying a physical ticket um having that as being that uh crash 98 forces comedian merch is awful true fair enough another person says yeah yes i want a t-shirt with a comedy written on it um snack pack extravaganza said it's lame so it, it kind of varies in my chat in terms of people what they think regarding podcast merch but i'd love to know what you think as well in the comments what you think below in terms of podcast merch do you buy it do you care um wouldn't you prefer to buy podcast merch if you do care at, after the show as opposed to buying off their site? Or would you prefer just to keep the money so you can buy more booze and get a couple more eight balls? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. Hey, oh, oh, hey. 